the plants that we ate, were those the same kind of plants we eat today? Were those plants back then, were they toxic? Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, they're, what a lot of people forget, I don't know how many folks listening to this have ever gone out and done a wild edible plant class. I've done a lot of this sort of thing. When I was a kid, I was a big fan of Yule Gibbons, you know, and I was out there in the woods and trying to pick a bunch of different things and see how much, you know, food I could gather or just walking around the woods. And I'm, and anybody who's done it can tell you that it's not, you know, yeah, there are a lot of different things that have certain levels of edibility to them, and it's highly variable. And many plants that are considered edible plants uh, you're cautioned very quickly not to eat too much of this, don't eat too many of those because, you know, there are you know, endocrine disruptors in that or there, uh, or there's stuff in here that, you know, can be really hard on your kidneys or your liver or whatever. So just a little nibble here, a little nibble there, a lot of seasonal variability in, in the availability of things. And, um, and as it turns out, in nature, you know, nowadays our vegetables that we grow and that we eat have been, you know, we've modified so much from their wild counterparts that we've been able to breed a lot of what they call anti-nutrients out of a lot of the foods, a lot of the plant foods that we um, enjoy today. Not all of them. Uh, there's still goitrogens and things like that and brassica or cruciferous vegetables uh, and other kinds of anti-nutrients and things. But it's nowhere near the issue that it that it used to be. And one of the things that you learn from people who teach these wild edible classes is that don't eat too much of this, don't eat too much of that. If you're going to eat this, please cook it first, you know. And uh, cooking was something that we weren't doing consistently all the time until, you know, probably uh, in, a, in a universal way more like 50,000 years ago. Um, there's scattered evidence of fire up to 350,000 years ago around, you know, where we were charring meat. You know, it was cold out, and we figured out that it was easier to eat a piece of meat if it wasn't frozen solid. <laughs> and it, and, it, and, it, and it, it helped warm us if we could warm it over a fire or cook it over a fire first. And so it's perfectly okay for us to eat some of our food cooked. And I think plant foods oftentimes... Um, I, I think that there are good reasons for eating some plant plant foods raw some of the time and plant foods cooked some of the time. Part of what cooking does for us is it helps to break down some of the cellulose, uh, which is that hard, fibrous material that we can't digest. You know, we, we don't have, at least most of us don't have a rumen. Um, most of us don't chew our cud and all of that, don't have four stomachs. And so by cooking, that helps to break down those those uh, those cell walls a little bit so that we can make better use of the nutrition, and um, and then if you use uh, you know butter or oil or something like that over the cooked veggie, then you're you're going to better absorb some of the fat soluble nutrients uh, like you know the carotenoids and things like that. Um, and of course, when you eat foods raw, there are enzymes and things that are there. But our ancestors would have had a real challenge uh, with plant foods. And uh, most of what would have been available would have had some degree of toxicity. And uh, unless we were able to cook it, it would never have been a major source of calories for us. You have to realize that calories, um, when you're in a wilderness situation, calories are survival. And the nutrient density uh, in, in more richly caloric foods means survival uh, to us. And uh, plants, plant foods, they take a lot of energy to to cultivate. Um, it can take a lot of time and, and energy to pick just the right things and process it in just the right way to consume it. Uh, some things you can pick right, right off the plant and eat and other things we would have had to do some things to. And uh, that's labor intensive and sometimes you're burning more calories than you're getting out of the food. So mm -hmm. as omnivores we always would have gone after whatever was available to us to eat. Um, and uh, I certainly don't have a, a problem with that concept at all. But the idea that we somehow evolved eating nothing but plant-based foods is crazy. It, as a matter of fact, that, that there was a, a, a study um, that was, a, uh, was written up in Scientific American some time back. I have the reference in my book, but uh, where they studied human coprolites, 
uh, basically fossilized human feces, and and they examined what the contents were of these samples that ranged anywhere from 50,000 to 300,000 years of age, and they actually found in those particular samples no evidence of plant fiber whatsoever. Hmm. So the chances are we did go for significant stretches of time without access to very much uh, plant-based food. And it doesn't mean that we wouldn't have eaten it if we had access to it. But many of the plant foods that really have uh, either actual protein content or um, or even some of the stuff that had higher you know, caloric starch content would have been prohibitively toxic to us. 